Hello folks, hope everybody's doing okay. I don't know about you and what you should have been doing today. I should have been in Hereford Cathedral playing their annual performance of the Messiah. 900 odd people standing up for the Alleluia Chorus, trumpets pelting forth, violins working away. It's a good job we've got some gibbons instead, isn't it? This is gibbons number two for two trebles. And as with the others, I'm working again from the Hunter edition, so I have no bar lines or bar numbers. I've got rehearsal letters, which I will point out on the way through. I thought we'd look at the top part um, so that when we play it through together, I can play the bottom part and start off. It's quite a long piece, this, and there are an awful lot of things to think about. And in the interests of not making this video several hours long, I'm going to maybe work through just a little bit quicker than I sometimes do. So you might need to do a bit of pausing and rewinding and, and just going back over to catch some of the fingering and bowing. Otherwise, we'll be there until Christmas. Top part then. Let's start on a back bow because I think the feature of this opening theme is that the first note is an upbeat to a thing that goes one, two, three, one, two, three, up there. So the first minimum needs to be on a back bow and slightly lighter than the second one. And all the way up to that top A, I would use diatonic fingering. So one, two, three, four, right up to the top fret. Let's see what happens, shall we? And the other bit of fingering to tell you about in there is that when you get to the top, you've got to come back down again. Here, between the F and the C, I would use chordal fingering, so three on the F and two on the C. After this crotchet rest, I think the next two crotchets are up eats into this. Consequently, I want the dotted crotchet to come on a forward bow. So we need the upbeat crotchets to start on a forward bow. And I think they should be at the tip. They need to be short and light into that. I would play that D with a fourth finger, the end of the phrase, and that is letter A in my edition. After the C sharp, the crotchet D, which I'm suggesting we play on a four, that is letter A. Shall we play from the top up to there? I'll count you two minims in. One, two, and one, two, three, one, two, three. another back bow and the same here that C needs to be a second finger I think so that you've got enough fingers to reach the G at the top there a second the crotchet rest that we've just reached that is letter B on the rest itself that is the letter so from letter A I started the next crotchet on a back bow because I think it's an upbeat into this and the same with this one nice light small not enormous upbeat plenty of weight on the dotted crotchet and almost nothing on the minimum, I think. Favour the dotted crotchet, favour the top note. Another back bow here. And a back again here. I think I 
would finger this two four shall we play if i count into letter a we'll go from the crotchet after it two minims into letter a and then we'll start on that open a string one two one curious place to put it perhaps but on that F natural crotchet that is letter C. Let's have a look from B onwards. I think that letter B itself should probably start on a back bow and I think there's a risk here. When you're, when you're playing a duet there's a lot of things happening, both parts are quite busy and then at letter B part two drops out and leaves you all on your own on the top line and I think you need to sort of expand to fill up the available space so I would play this <laughs> quite broadly, quite legato with lots of bow that enjoys the semitones and that sort of, it's got a slightly slinky feeling after some of the hopping around at the beginning it's got a really different character so just plenty of bow and plenty of sound in there after the bottom D I would start these quavers on a new forward bow and I don't mean that I think you should take it off and, and retake and get back to the tip. I think that after the crotchet, that bottom D is quite weak. I don't think you're going to be miles through the bow. You're going to move on to the top string anyway. I would just carry on where you are for the quavers, but it does. it's nice to have them the right way round, I think. So the quavers begin on a forward bow. I would bar the F to the B flat and then play one, two, four up to the top D. I think it's more elegant than the open string. After the quaver rest we're going to start on a back bow. And I think rather than thinking in two sections, you could do, but I quite like a longer thought so I'd be inclined to play through the dotted crotchet right the way to the A and then see the next three crotchets as things that belong together that lead into that dotted minim A and the same again I would relax onto that final D strong E weak D and then you start a new phrase one crotchet before my letter C is marked Shall we do that from letter B? Letter B starts with a rest. I'll count you two minutes in and we'll start with a back bow on the B flat. Quite broad, plenty of bow. One, two, one. <laughs> dotted crotchet F although actually I don't think you should stop there because there'd be this funny little tail left over at the end I think you do need to play through 
right till the end. And I think my C is slightly flat. That's better. This is letter C then, starting one crotchet before it. It comes out on a forward bow. And even though it's an upbeat in feel, I think you need to bow it through because it works out well in the long run. So the crotchet before C will start on a forward bow. This comes out well. This doesn't. But it's a nice way of working your way back to the tip of the bow after you've had that one. Use this as a nice way of getting back to the tip. Then you're there for this. Everything goes out really nicely from there onwards. Fingering wise, you need to start in half position. Bar the F to the B flat. I think I'd use a four for this D as you wish really, I quite like having it on the same string as I'm about to play the next quaver on. I would have a three on the F at the top because I like to be in half position to reach the B flat. But again, as you wish, you can reach back if you'd rather. I think in here, it's crucial that the dotted crotchets have more substance to them than the ordinary crotchets do. So starting at C again. There's a, there's a pattern in there, but then here, the dotted crotchet has more in it than the top F, I think. And these two crotchets are leading to that one, and that one is weak. These two crotchets are leading to there. Here, fingering-wise, Again, I'm inclined to use a four rather than an open string. Slightly just a matter of personal taste. I prefer that, I think. Then I'm in half position because I'm more comfortable reaching the octave F if I've got a three on the top one. that together I'm going to start one crotchet before letter C and I'm going to start it on a forward bow and just when we get there in real life it will come out on a forward bow but I've marked it to actually just stop myself from putting a back bow in there I would be naturally inclined having finished before it strong week I always tend to put a back bow in here and then I regret it about four crotchets later, so I've marked it. Upbeat into letter C. One and two. rest is letter E. It's quite a long way from D to E and there's an awful lot of stuff happening in here. So letter D comes on the dotted crotchet F. I'm going to assume that we've made it as far as the C string and I'm going to pick up from the next crotchet rest on the dotted crotchet open A string which I'm going to start on a forward bow at the tip and in first position. And here, the C that I put down to play the dotted crotchet with has not gone anywhere. 
and it still hasn't gone anywhere. So you end up, by the time you reach the E on the top string, your C is still down, and when you go for the, uh, the G with a four at the top, the C is still down. So your hand is in a really reliable shape for finding that G at the top. After which you are going to be conveniently near the tip of the bow to start all your quavers. These are a little bit hoppy, don't panic. I would come back into half position. So we were in first for the top G. I would move back here, one and two on the F natural and the D. Then I think I would stop the E with my fourth finger. Then I'd see the octave leap coming and think, okay, I don't really want to go to the top string. So I'd put a one on the bottom D and a four on the top. Come back again, maybe. Four again for this E. And we're perfectly in half position to play that B flat with. If you do this section in first position and you reach back, you're going to find that where we've just stopped, you had a one on the D and then you'll find that you've got a hop to reach your B flat. So we won't do that. I really would recommend half position. Let's go from the crotchet rest after letter D and just test that out. And then we'll look at the next bit that takes us up to E. So we're starting on the crotchet rest, the A string that follows at the tip. One, two, rest. <laughs> position but now we want a two on this G I think so that we can play the top D with a four rather than an open string it's too far to go it's too likely to stick out and we've got to come back down after it I just think it's too much of a of a risk so I had two on the G and four on the D at the top then because this is a treble and you absolutely couldn't do this on a bass. I think I'd be inclined to play the bottom D with a second finger. So we're in half position. You could play the D with a one and use the F that's here on the C string. It's such a rubbish sounding note. And then all you've done is move the problem till later because then you run out of fingers to play the B flat with and you're gonna end up up here and you're just going to gradually creep up the finger port on the low strings. So we won't do that. We'll play in half position and put that F natural on the first finger. Chordal fingering here between the C and the F. As you like really for this D, I like it on a four. So I've opted for that four, reach back for the B flat. And there we are at letter E. Let's start at D again. After letter D, the crotchet rest, followed by the open A string. So after two, one, two, rest. Again, there's a long way between E and F and an awful lot of things happening. So letter E begins with a crotchet rest, 
we'll start on a back bow. So there's plenty of sound on the dotted crotchet B flats. Let's make lots of the semitone really smooth. But not too much of the final minim D, otherwise you're going to get in the way of your partner who's starting that theme off. After the quaver rest, you want a back bow. And I think you just want to play this quite short and small and tidy. I'd do another back bow here. And I think I'd go for an open string because we're on our way up here, aren't we? I love this bit, it's such mad rhythm. You have to start on a back bow for this little quaver at the top. Here, I would put a one on the bottom D. So you can get the octave in without needing to go all the way to the top string. Now we've got a bowing problem here. Because if we keep going, this comes all backwards and all of this, if we carry on, is all backwards forevermore. Now, two suggestions about how we might solve that. And I'm looking about halfway between letter E and F. There's a quaver rest followed by a top G and the start of this funky little rhythmic bit. I'm looking for somewhere discreet where I can tuck an extra back bow in that I don't think is going to interfere with the flow that might even add to the phrasing and is going to bring us the right way round leading into and carrying on from letter F. So I have two suggestions for it. I think we have to start on a back bow to get the crotchets forward and all these quavers the right way round. Now my first suggestion is a back bow on the next quaver. So it's the C. I think that would be a good place to tuck a back bow. Shall we test that out? Starting on that top G after a quaver rest halfway between letter E and letter F. Let's go one, two. the first suggestion and the second is that you leave it slightly later so starting in the same place keep going and this time I'm going to tuck here on the D before the crotchets start I think you can tuck an extra little back bow in on the final quaver D before those crotchets start. So let's go the same place, let's go from the top G and we'll try out that second suggestion of bowing. So we're leaving the correction, the little tuck, very slightly later. Same place, you're in after two. One, two. I think either of those are plausible. I think possibly my preference is for the later one. I think you can hide it better down there and again if you look at the other part your colleague at that point is triumphantly arriving at the top of their phrase so it's a really good place for you to discreetly sort out your bowing and it's not a daft place in the phrasing either to just have a slight breath I think. Let's play from letter E right back to crotchet rest. Here we go. 
one, two, rest. because that crotchet rest is letter G. So F comes on this dotted crotchet where we've now sorted our bowing out by whichever mechanism you chose. So we're on a forward bow at letter F. We've got to use diatonic fingering to get up to the top A. Chordal fingering here. to hold the one down at the bottom and that's it if you want to you could correct some bowing couldn't you from F you could put another back bow in here brings those top notes out the right way round we can do that after the next quaver rest we can start back and make sure that that comes out nicely. You've got to decide whether you think there's time in that little nippy bit between F and G to correct the bowing. Is it worth it or is it easier to bow it through? Whichever way you do it, these. I think there's a real kind of clarion call to those. So make sure whichever way they come out bowing wise, they've got plenty of bow, plenty of sound and nicely near the bridge. Shall we play from letter F? So we're on two, we're at the tip near the tip, on a forward bow, after two, one, two. Let's go on, on the back bow. G needs to start on a back bow and you need to end up really near the tip by the end of it for these quavers and here the F even though it's on a back bow I think it needs to be strong weak and the effect of that is both musically satisfying but also it's very convenient because it means you haven't traveled very far on the dotted crotchet E you've used lots of bow for the F not very far for here and now we're at the tip and I like these quavers to be a bit short and a bit hoppy and that is easiest towards the tip of the bow and we're conveniently there aren't we look out for the chordal fingering in there place to tuck another back bow in just right at the very end shall we play from letter G so we're going to play on a back bow a nice long one getting ourselves right to the tip letter G one two
we've been playing at quite a sensible speed up until now I think so shall we stick to that and I will play you the bottom part at that speed for you to play along with. I think in real life this should go a little bit quicker. It does potentially cause a few problems, particularly in the second half of the piece, but it adds to the fun. So this is it, a little bit faster. <laughs> 